I had never met a young black man like him before. He really didn't like how his life was. You didn't tell your daughter right away that she was his kid, though. Not really, no. It seems like just a minute ago, Evan Ross came out of nowhere and told everyone a shocking secret about his famous singer mother, Diana Ross. Fans and people in the entertainment business are talking about and tweeting about this news all over the media. Many people began to wonder what made Evan decide to say this. What kind of bond did the mother and son have? What does this news mean for Diana Ross? How should Evan move forward? You may also have a million and one questions about this subject. Are you ready to satisfy your interest by seeing the curtains come down? If that sounds like you, you might want to relax, grab a cold drink of juice, and pay closer attention to this video than normal because this trip is going to be rough. Check out Evan Ross's background. Let's look into Evan Ross's past before we give you more information. It tells you more about him than you already knew. The Nace Jr. and Ross family had a baby on August 26, 1988. What kind of child was this? Born in Greenwich, Connecticut, Evan Olaf Nace is the son of Arna Nace, a businessman and mountain climber, and Diana Ross, an actress. His Norwegian father and African-American mother raised him. Evan only has one real brother, Ross Nace. He also has a lot of step-siblings because his parents got divorced in 2000 and then married other people. His three older half-sisters from his mother's side were Rhonda, whose real father was Barry Gordy, Tracy, whose real father was Robert Ellis Silberstein, and Chudney. He also had two younger paternal half-brothers and three older paternal half-siblings from his father's first marriage. Their names were Christopher, Katinka, and Leona. Nicholas and Lois were born from his dad's third marriage. Because his mother and father had a past of cheating on each other, Evan didn't get the attention he should have gotten from both of them when he was young. This made him feel less important and made some of his step-siblings dislike him. Schooling and work. Ever think about mixing work and school? Which do you think would need more attention, and which do you think will suffer? Evan Ross tried his hand at three important areas of the entertainment business. Singing, playing, and being funny. Evan first became an actor while he was a student at Greenwich High School. He sometimes skipped school just as to stay in place on stage. A famous woman named his mother, Deanne Ross, affected his work in the entertainment business. He lost his father, Arnie, in a mountain hiking accident near Cape Town in January 2004. His father was a very wealthy investor who made a lot of money in oil, real estate, shipping, and it. The Arch said that Arna's thriving business company was worth around $600 million at the time of his death. Evan was heartbroken when he heard about Arna's death. It hurt him deeply. It seemed like the whole world fell apart right in front of his eyes as he stood there powerless. After his father died, he kept going to school and acting, but as the saying goes, you can't please two people at once. Evan finally quit school and worked as an actor full-time. His mother didn't like this, but she still backed him because she thought that maybe something good would happen if he acted for Evan. The first important part Evan had was in the 2006 movie ATL, which stars rappers T.I. And Big Boy. And Big Boy. His mother was thrilled to see her son on TV, and the way he played the part in the movie made her even more sure that playing was his true calling. After that, Evan got great reviews for his part as troubled teen Amari McCarter in the hit home video movie Life Support, which starred Queen Latifah and Tracy his stepsister who played his older sister in the play. Moving on, Evan later had a part in the biopic film Pride, in which he played a nice teenager who had trouble speaking. Notably, he became very well known after being in this movie. A lot of his fans started to feel sorry for him as a child and praised how well he could read lines even though he was young. Tracy, his half-sister, went from being an average actress to a movie director, and Evan was in an episode called What's Black Alakin? in the movie Girlfriends. The well-known Chrisette Michelle also had a small role in the movie. Besides Line Watch with Cuba Gooding, Gardens of the Night, Life is Hot in Cracktown, Hilary Duff's music, according to Greta, Notorious Big, Nasty Girl, and even Lionel Richie's music video for the song Just Go, he was in a lot of other movies, music videos, and kiddios, and comedies from 2007 to 2009. Evan joined the cast of the CW's Teen Soap 90210 in its third season in 2010. He played Liam Court's half-brother in Annie Wilson's Shawnee Grimes' love interest. In the same year, he was in Case 219 and Muslim, which won awards at film festivals and stars Danny Glover and Nia Long. He played the lead role in the 2011 comedy drama The Family Tree and co-starred with Brittany Snow in the thriller 96 Minutes, which came out in some cinemas on April 28, 2012. Evan Ross was still very important in the show business. The comedy drama Jeff, Who Lives at Home, which was produced by Jay and Mark Duplass and came out in 2012, had a small part for him. In Hollywood, his part stood out more because of how versatile he was in the entertainment business. In the movie Crazy Sexy Cool the next year, he played music producer Dallas Austin. Evans started making his first RB album in 2007, which was a surprise. 
Then, after four years of working in the studio, his first single, Yes Main, came out. Tony De Niro recorded and co-wrote the song. Because he loved learning about the music business, he put out a sneak peek of another song called How to Live Alone on December 5th, 2014 on his Instagram page. The song, which features rapper T.I., was released as a single on May 14th, 2015. He played Masala in The Hunger Games Mockingjay, the first part of which came out on November 21st. Then he played the part again in the second part, which came out a month later. Also, in the second and third seasons of Fox's Soap Star, the actor played the important part of Angel Rivera. Evan Ross started working on the American Broadcasting Corporation crime show Wicked City in July 2015. He took over for Daryl Britt Gibson as a crime scene photographer named Diver Hawks. In 2016, he was on DJW and Hero Song They. He also did the songs Don't Look At Me and All I Want with Brittany O'Grady for the TV show Star. After that, in 2017, he was on Restricted by Chronic. What do we need to know about his relationships? Check back to find out. Enjoy your love life and help others. Evan Ross first saw Ashley Simpson at a friend's birthday party in July 2013. He was blown away by how beautiful she was, that he couldn't help but admire Ashley. Evan politely took a chance to talk to the most beautiful princess at the party, and the two of them traded pleasantries and business cards. Evan then offered to drive her home after the party, and she agreed. Ashley Simpson is a singer, songwriter, actor, and TV personality from the United States. Her real name was Ashley Nicole Ross, and like Evan Ross, she was a popular and recognizable figure in the entertainment business. He was her first husband, and they got married in 2008. They had a son together, whose name is Bronx Mobley. But they were only together for a short time, because in February 2011, she filed for divorce, telling the court that she and Pete had irreconcilable differences. After a few months, the divorce was finalized and the couple split up. It was said that her ex-husband Pete was already seeing someone else while he was married to Ashley. He told everyone about his secret romance by moving on with model Megan Camper after the divorce. She went to her friend's birthday party even though it was two years after her split because she thought she might meet a boyfriend there. She and Evan started dating right away after they met. And after a few months, they chose to make their relationship public by getting engaged. Finally, on August 30th, 2014, they said their wedding vows in Connecticut. In 2015, the couple had their first child, Jagger Snow. Evan, on the other hand, didn't think twice about adding his grandson Bronx to his family. Evan took care of him like he was his own son, which made Ashley happy in her second marriage. Evan and his wife released a song together on October 12, 2018. It was called Ashley Evan. In the same year, he and his wife, Ashley Simpson, were on a reality show that had six episodes. Notably, the couple showed their love for people by giving money to many charity foundations, such as the Elton John AIDS Foundation, Gabriel's Angel Foundation, Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund, Janie's Fund, and many more. In 2020, Ashley was seen in a shopping store with a bell bump, giving birth to Ziggy Blue, her second child. Evan is happy to have two kids. He and his wife have been married for over 10 years and have never been separated or divorced. The family recently shared on social media about Ashley's birthday party, which included everyone in the family, even those from the Bronx. You can see from this post that Evan and Ashley are still happily married, and they have a lot of money. Celeb Net Worth says that Evan Ross got an award in 2011 for his outstanding performance in the movie 96 Minutes. After seven years, his role in Buck Out Road got him nominated for Best Actor at the Nice International Film Festival and Best Actor in a Feature Film at the World Music and Independent Film Festival. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, nominated him for an Image Award for Outstanding Actor in a Television Movie, Miniseries, or Dramatic Special for Life Support in 2008. The Black Reel Award nominated him for Best Actor for Moose Lum in 2012. After that, Evan and his wife opened their Los Angeles home to fans through their reality show Ashley Plush Evan in 2018. Ashley has said that the house is a creative haven where she and her husband can follow their artistic interests, which is interesting. It was also found that the famous Gramercy Park Hotel in New York City served as a design inspiration. The house is said to have cost Evan Ashley 4.5 million US dollars in September 2020. It is in the Encino neighborhood of Los Angeles. It is useful to know that Evan Ross's net worth is now 25 million dollars and that of his wife Ashley, which is 11 million dollars. Before we talk about what Evan Ross said about his mother, let's take a trip down memory lane and remember the important events that made Diana Ross the famous person we all love and admire today. What is her name? When did she come out? How did her rise to fame go? Is she still alive? Don't worry, this movie part will answer all of these questions. See what you know about Diana Ross. Diana was born on March 26, 1944. She was the second of Ernestine and Fred Ross S.R.'s six children. 
Her mother gave her the name Diane at first, but because of a mistake on her birth record, she was later called Diana. During her early years, though, her family and close friends still called her Diane. Diana grew up in a love and blues-filled world. Barbara and Rita were her sisters, and Arthur Fred Jr. and Wilbur were there as brothers. Smokey Robinson lived next door to the Ross family at 635 Belmont Street in the north end of Detrat, which is near Highland Park, Michigan. Diana grew up as a Baptist, which is a branch of Christianity that only baptizes professing Christians and does so by submerging the person completely. Most Baptist churches believe in these four beliefs. Diana's mother, Ernestine, was diagnosed with tuberculosis when she was seven years old. Because of this, Ernestine's children had to move to her father's house. So much did Diana's grandmother, Mrs. William Moten, love and care for her that she almost thought she would never go back to her parents. But once Ernestine was better, the kids went back to Detroit. They moved to the working class Brewster Douglas housing projects and settled at St. Anthony Street when she was 14 years old. Diana also went to Cass Technical High School in downtown Detroit, which is a four-year college prep magnet school. From a very young age, she wanted to be a fashion designer, so her mother set her up with lessons in millinery, sewing, pattern making, and clothing design. In the end, she finished in 1962. She also took makeup and modeling classes in the evenings and on the weekends. Outside of school, she did a lot of things like swim and play sports. She was Hudson's first black American bus girl hired for the store in downtown Detroit, she also cut hair for her neighbors to make extra money, which made her mother happy because it was her daughter's dream to learn a skill. Love life, being arrested, and accomplishments. Diana Ross joined the Primettes when she was 15. The Primettes were a sister group to the male singing group The Primes. Paul Williams, a member of The Primes, told Milto. Jenkins about Diana Ross. Some of the other people in The Primettes were Betty McGlown, Mary Wilson, and Florence Ballard. In 1960, The Primettes won a talent show in Windsor, Ontario. As a result, Robert Bateman, an AR executive and singer, asked them to try out for Motown Records. The group was on its way to becoming great after this. Later, after her live performances at Sock Hops and other similar events went well, Diana talked to her old friend Smokey Robinson about trying out for Motown. Robinson agreed, but only under certain conditions. He demanded that the group try out for him first and that they let his band, The Miracles, hire Marv Tarplin as their guitarist for a tour that was coming up. Robinson finally got the Primettes to agree to his terms, but they didn't know that Tarplin would never come back to the group. Diana Ross's autobiography, Secrets of a Sparrow, says that Tarplin played in Robinson's band for more than 30 years. Ross said it was a fair exchange. After that, the Primates tried out for Modown in front of several directors. Barry Gordy wrote in his book, To Be Loved, that he was on his way to a business meeting when he heard Diana sing There Goes My Baby. Her voice stopped him in his tracks. Although he asked the group to perform again when he saw how young they were, he told them to finish high school first before trying to get signed by Motown. Diana and the other people on her crew were upset, but they were determined to become popular no matter what. The group started going to Motown's Hitsville, which was a surprise because its main office was in the United States of America. They made it a habit to go to the offices every day and offer to help with Motown's recordings in any way they could. This often included hand claps, background vocals, and Diana even did their hair, makeup, sewing, and costume design. She was determined that her group would get a chance to show the world what they could do. So what did the group do after Marv Taplin left? In the late 1960s, Barbara Martin took over for Taplin, and the group was finally allowed to record their songs at Hitsville Studio. Smokey Robinson, who is the vice president of Motown, wrote many of them. Gordy agreed to sign the group in January 1961, but they had to change their name first, Artist Janie Bradford, who was also the secretary for Motown, asked Florence Ballard, who was the only member of the group at the time, to come up with a new name for them. Florence finally came up with a name that didn't have an E.T. after a lot of thinking. She finally decided that Supreme would be the new name for their group. A short time later, when the other members heard about the new development, they were not pleased. Diana told Florence that she was afraid the group would be mistaken for a pair of male singers. There was no way for the group to change their name, they had to accept it and keep making songs. Once the condition was met, Gordy kept his end of the deal by joining the group on January 15, 1961, with a new name. After a year, the newly hired guitarist quit, making the band only three members. Diana was especially worried about this, so she went looking for Barbara. Unfortunately, she couldn't be found. It looked like she had this plan for a while and chose to act, after a year, with the other people in the group. They had their first big hit with When the Love Light Starts Shining Through His Eyes in late 1963. It got as high as number 23 on the Billboard Hot 100 pop chart. Some people started calling Barbara the Bad Apple, who had to leave for the group to move forward. 
since it was while she was gone that the group became famous. What do you think about this? Was Barbara really the bad person? Diana Ross was made the lead singer of the group by Gordy at the end of the year. It's interesting that the group got their first number one hit while on tour with Dick Clark's Cavalcade of Stars. This set the stage for more success. Researchers found that the Supremes sang on 10 number one songs between August 1964 and May 1967. All of them made it to the UK Top 40. Notably, the group was a hit both in their own country and around the world, and during the 1960s, they were Motown's biggest selling singing act. Diana started to take over talks with the media, answering questions that were meant for Ballard or Wilson. She fought to be paid more than her co-workers. Due to a mistake on her birth document, she started going by the name Diana in 1965, which surprised Ballard and Wilson, who had known her as Diane before. She was the lead singer of the Supremes, but she was just the soul of a machine, ready to plug into any arrangement, song, or show dress that Barry and the Motown organization came up with. While she sang about how painful love is, she didn't seem to be in pain. This didn't mean that the catchphrases in her songs got softer or changed in some other way. Instead, Diana's great gift for life gave them a new level of power. Diana always makes it clear that she is still living, no matter how she dresses or what fake truth she says. Gordy fired Florence Ballard from the Supreme Court because of some serious problems with her behavior, weight, and alcoholism. In July 1967, she hired Cindy Birdsong from Patti LaBelle and the Bluebells to take her place. Gordy changed the group's name to Diana Ross and the Supremes. This made it easy to charge more for a performance with a solo star and a backing group. In 1996, he thought about letting Diana leave the Supremes to start a single career, but he changed his mind because he thought the group's success was still too important. For Diana to take care of her own duties, Diana Ross continued to perform with the Supremes until 1970, when she chose to start acting on her own. From 1970 to 2000, she put out a lot of solo records and was in a lot of movies. Some of the movies she was in are Reach Out and Touch, Ain't No Mountain Enough, Everything is Everything, I'm Still Waiting, The Jackson 5, Lady Sings the Blues, When We Grow Up, and Touch Made in the Morning. I saw him the last time, I had a love hangover, Today is a New Day, I'm Still Not Over You, and a lot of other things. She was shocked to hear that Florence had died in 1976, and she went to the funeral with other friends, family members, and work associates of the person who had died. Diana decided to get back together with the Supremes members for a TV special called Modown 25, Yesterday, Today, and Forever After the Funeral. It has been proven that Diana Ross has been married twice and has five children. She did, however, have relationships with a few guys, such as Barry Gordy, Smokey Robinson, and Gene Simmons. In an interview, she said that Arna, Evan's father was the love of her life, even though she had been in long-term relationships with other men. She cried deeply when she heard about the accident that killed him. Diana Ross was also a mom to many kids because some of the men she slept with had kids from other women before she met them. Unfortunately, Diana's relationship with Simon has hurt her friendship with her best friend Cher. Simon breaks up with Cher to be with Diana, which makes Cher hate her ex-best friend. It was Diana and her daughter Tracy Ellis Ross on the cover of Essence magazine in May 2004. Celebrating 50 years of existence, Diana and all of her children were on Barbara Walters' Mother's Day show on TV in May 2002. In August of the same year, Diana also started the Promises Institute's program for recovering drug abusers. After a few months, Diana was pulled over by Tucson police for going the wrong way on a one-way street while she was at Arizona's Canyon Ranch Health Resort. She bombed a breath test, so she was jailed for DUI. After she got 48 hours in jail, which she did near her home in Greenwich, Connecticut, a lot of artists like Michael Jackson, Beyonce, Madonna, Jade Thurlwall, Questlove, Ladisi, and Ting Tings have been inspired by Diana Ross. Several of her songs have also been remade or taken from other songs. Love Hangover was also used in Monica's hit song The First Night in 1998. Also, Will Smith, Master P, Heavy D, and Bone Thugs all use samples of the song together. Vectroid sampled It's Your Move for her song Lisa Frank 420 slash Modern Computing in 2011. The song was on her ninth album Floral Shop and it was released under her old name, Macintosh plus his. Kaufman Astoria Studios held an event in Astoria, Queens, on January 24, 1985, to honor Diana by taking the opportunity to name Studio 4 after her. The Diana Ross Building recognized her role in bringing the studio back to life after it was in danger of being torn down because of her work on the show The Wiz Diana was named one of 21 recipients of the Presidential Medal of Freedom on November 16, 2016. This is the highest civilian award in the country. The Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award was given to Supremes co-founders Dia Ross, Mary Wilson, and the late Florence Ballard in 2023. Diana was the first woman to win the award twice. Diana's main home for many years has been a big house in Greenwich, Connecticut. 
The house is on five acres of land, and she put it on the market for $39.5 million in 2007. She tried to sell it but couldn't find a buyer. After the real estate market crashed, she was able to get a return on the property taxes, which looking back, didn't really show how much the house was worth. It's actually two pieces of land one is worth about $9 million, and the other is said to be worth $10 million because it's on the water. Celebrity Net Worth says that Diana Ross is worth $250 million right now. Diana Ross is still alive, and she just recently enjoyed her 80th birthday on social media. Evan Ross wrote Revelation. Evan Ross, Diana Ross's son, recently did an exclusive interview in which he couldn't help but talk about how much he admires his mother. He did this with a charming smile and a twinkle in his eye. Evan talked about what he thinks makes Diana such a great woman. He also said that his mother was the person who inspired him to become a lawyer. He asked, have you seen my mom? Her power is like a storm. She has a wonderful presence that makes a place shine. There's something about her that makes her look great and she's not afraid to share it with everyone. Evan then talked about how hard his mother worked and how dedicated she was to her job. He emphasized how much she loved music and performing. He said that she has always loved her music and shows so much. She trains for hours on end, making sure that every song and dance move is just right. It's no surprise that she has become such a star in her field. A mother and her son's love and admiration for each other is truly beautiful, especially in a world where celebrity relationships are often presented as rough and dramatic. Diana Ross has definitely left an indelible mark on the entertainment business. She has had a huge impact on her children, which is a normal example of a happy mother and singer. There were rumors, though, that Evan's mother did not get along well with her son's wife, Ashley, because she was against their marriage from the start and said she did not want her beloved son to marry a divorcee. How much of this is true? Are you sure Diana really didn't like Ashley? Please tell us in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and click the like button. Please click on the movie that is shown on your screen before you leave.